Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo, and in this video, you're going to learn about the Ruby each method and how to implement your own version of this method so you can fully understand how it works. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do it now because I will help you improve your Ruby skills. So the each method, a very basic but also very important method. Why? Because it's the main method you will be using to iterate or loop over a list of items. Like for example, this array right here, it's an array of integers, and it can also be a hash, a range, or any other enumerable object. And here I have an example. And it's the each method being called on the array, and then we pass a block. Inside this block, I have this parameter or argument, and it's n, but it could be anything else. It could be i, item, number, right? It doesn't really matter as long as it's a valid variable name in Ruby. In this case, I choose to use, use n. Now, inside the block, we put what we want to do with each individual element. So what this n represents is each number, is each of the numbers, right? So it will be first one, then two, then three. And here we say what we want to do. We can print it. We can save it to a database. We can do anything that we want with this number or a string or whatever the contents of the array are. So in this case, what I want to do is something very simple. I just want to put, in other words, I want to print the values as I find them. So if I run this program, you will notice that that is exactly what you would expect, right? So if we have these numbers and we say that we want to print every number, we get exactly that. We get one, two, three, four, five. So that's how it works. But now let's see how each works. How is, what's each really doing? And to do that, what I want to do is to write our own version of each together. Let's do that. I'm going to define a method. I'm going to call it each. It takes one parameter, the array that we want to work with. And inside, I'm going to add a counter variable. I'm going to explain what is, why we need this in a moment. So counter zero. And here we are going to write a while loop. The while loop is what makes the each method work. So we define a while loop. And what's the condition? The condition is that the counter is less than the array size. And here we want to make sure to increase this counter. So we advance and make progress and not get into an infinite loop that never ends, right? And what do we do besides that? Well, we want to yield. What's yield? Well, yield is a Ruby keyword that we call the block and give it a specific parameter. So if you, if you remember that n from a minute ago, that n comes from here, from the yielding. And if you want to learn more about this, um, about blocks, uh, in my Ruby book, Ruby Deep Dive, I go into more depth. I go into more details on how all of that works. But right now, let's yield the array counter. And this counter is more like an index. So let's rename that index. So it's the index inside the array. So what is this doing? Well, it's doing the following. It's doing array zero, then array one, then array two, right? 
and all the way until the end of the array or hash or range, right? So it's doing that. We increase, we start the index at zero, then we keep increasing it and we yield, we return the individual elements. And finally, we need a return value because each and all of the numeral methods like map, select, inject, all of them return some value, right? And what value do we want to return? Well, each returns the starting value without modification. So that means the array itself. We are given an array, we return that array without changes. So that's what I'm doing here. And now we can test this. We can call each array and we pass a block and the block we are going to use n just like before and then put n. If I run this, you can see that it works just like expected and just like the built-in each method, right? But notice something interesting here. In the original version, in the built-in version of each, we don't call it like this, right? Because this each, and then we pass in the array. But in the original version, it looks like the following. Looks like it array dot each, right? It looks like that. How can we make it like this? How can we make our own each method like this? Well, let me show you how to do that. Let me just comment this for now. And uh, what we need to do is to reopen the array class like this, class array. So what I'm doing here, in Ruby, we have something that's called open classes. That means that you can, you can redefine the methods inside a class that are, that's already defined. So you can do class array and, and the array class already exists, right? It's a built-in into Ruby. But I can do this and add new methods or redefine existing methods. So what I want to do is to move this or own each into array. And now what I'm doing is I am overwriting the built-in method. If I try to run this, we get an error. What's the error? Well, it says grown number of arguments. And this makes sense because we're taking an array but we don't need to, we're not passing any arguments there, right? So let's delete this argument, run this again. Now we get a different error, undefined local variable method array. Why? Well, because there is no array to reference. The array is the object itself. So how do we fix this? Like this. We change array for self. And if I run now the code, it works. But why? Well, self, the key is here. Self is a special Ruby keyword that, is a, that refers to the current object, to itself, right? So if we are inside an array, what that means that self we refer to the array. That's, that's why we can access it inside here. Now we can also delete this because this is a method call, size is a method, so we don't need the self there. Let's quickly review what you learned here. You learn about the Ruby each method which is used to loop over a list of elements like array like an array or a, or a hash. You also learn how the while statement is what makes the each method works, right? And we implemented our own each method. And finally, you learn about Ruby open classes and the self keyword.
I hope you learned something new. If you did, please click the like button for me so I know that you like this video. And to keep learning, make sure to subscribe to the channel now if you haven't yet. Visit my website, rubyguides.com and watch more of my videos on this channel. And all of that will help you keep improving and keep growing your Ruby skills. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next video.